Hi guys and welcome. Today's project is going to be a shackle dog collar. So I'll be using these shackles right here. I used two for my hookup and I got these at pericordgalaxy.com. A while back they were very kind and sent me a bunch of them to try out and use and I do like how this collar comes out and this is a fairly easier weave to do if you are new. And I will also be using this three-fourths of an inch o-ring. All my supplies that I use today will be listed down below if you are interested in trying this out. And um, also, these shackles do come in colors, but the colored shackles have a smaller ending hole. This is how large this hole is. The colors ones are much smaller, so I like to use a 275 cord in the colored ones, and I can use um, 550 in the larger. So as for the cord that I'll be using today, I am using this floral dip dyed cord, and I'm going to be using three strands of this cord, and I can show you what it looks like on the roll. So, alright, so this is what it looks like on the roll. It's really, really pretty and that green makes everything just super bright. So for this project, to start, we are going to start with the cord that you'll use for the double cow's hitch. And what we're going to do is we're going to take one of our shackles, we're going to take our end of our cord, and we're going to go through this hole, just like that. And you're going to bring this cord to the middle at the buckle. Once you get it to the middle, you are going to um, take the end that you were working with in the beginning, the one that you put through, you're going to again go through that hole the same exact way you did the first time. So you're just going to go through that hole, and I really should have this melted. So, okay. So now I'm going to go through that hole. Let's dry. And you're just going to push it through. So once you pushed it through and you tighten it up, um, you can double check, make sure that this is the middle of your cord by measuring out the two sides. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add my ring and I'm just going to push those cords through. So then it should look something like that. You have your shackle on and you have your ring attached. Now we're just going to turn this around and we are going to do a double cow's hitch on the U part of the shackle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my right cord. I like to just loop it up and I'm going to push it from front to back through that shackle. Bring it to the other side. Now I want my cord to be on the left side of my cord that I'm working. Then I'm going to go to the right with it. I'm going to make a small loop again and I'm going to push it from back to front through that shackle. Just like that. And you're going to want to pull that through. But before you have this loop right here that you just created, you want to take your cord and you want to put it through that loop and then pull it. Okay. 
and there's your first cow's hitch. Now we're just going to push that to the right, take your cord on the left, you're going to go front to back through the shackle, but when you bring it out, just pull it towards your right side. So you want it to kind of come in the middle. And then you're going to go to the left with your cord, so you're kind of going over the cord that you just worked, or the, the cord that you're working, sorry. And you're going to go over to the left. You're going to take it again, and you're going to go from back to front, just like that. And then you have your loop right here that you're making. You're just going to go down that loop and just pull it. And there's your two cow's hitches. And now we can hook it up to the jig. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, my spare and I'm going to take the pin out. And I want this piece that I'm going to work with first. So I'm going to take the pin out of this one that has the two cow hitches hooked up to it. It's going to come off. You're going to put this piece in. And then you have that side done. For the other side, you'll just attach this U part to the body of it and just stick the pin in and just turn it. So to hook it up to your jig, what you're going to do is you want your double cow's hitch part at the top of your work. And then you can hook up the bottom like that and then tighten everything up. Okay, once you got it on the jig, what we can start to do is add our cords. The first cord that I'm going to add, what I want to do is I want to loosen up my cow's hitches just a little bit. And I am going to take my cord and go right through those cow's hitches. I am using a pericord needle, but if you don't have one, you can melt the tip of your cord to make a hard cap to push through. And I'm just going to go right to left. Maybe. Just like that, pull it to the other side and bring the middle of the cord to the top of your work. For the next cord, what I want to do is I want to Go through this first cow's hitch right in the middle. Go underneath these two stitches going towards the left and come up this second cow's hitch. So I'm going to go right in the middle, go over one, go over two, right through the second cow's hitch. And you can bring this to the other side and bring the middle to the top of your work. Alright, once you have that taken care of, what you can do is you can roll up some of your ends and I do suggest that you roll them up differently. And what I mean by that is I have my two cords that are coming out of my double cow's hitch and I have these two cords rolled up small. My next cord that I would be working, I have that one rolled up a little bit bigger. You can also use different colored rubber bands. For the top cord, I'm actually going to be using um, blue rubber bands to help me differentiate which ones I'm grabbing because we're working with all of the same cords. 
The next thing I want to do is I'm going to put my O-ring at the top of my work and I have a clothespin that I like to stick at the top of my work to hold that little guy up there and we can get started. So like I said you can roll up those two cords, leave this top cord, the very top, undone because we're going to be pushing them through the O-ring. So the first cord that I'm going to work with is the ones that are coming out of my double cow's hitch, so they're going to be the smaller bundle. And what I want to do is I'm going to go underneath this first cord, right up the middle, over the second cord. Next I'm going to take the smaller bundle and I'm going to go underneath the cord that I just worked. And I'm going to do the same, just the mirror image. So I'm going to go underneath this first cord, right up the middle, over the second cord. And then I have like a little triangle. Next I'm going to take my larger bundle on my right side. And what I want to do here is I want to go underneath the area on the left, right side. So I'm going to go underneath this loop, underneath this strand right here. And I'm just going to wrap it around and then go down this loop on my right side. So I'm just going to go underneath. Next I'm going to go over and I'm going to go down my loop on my right side. I'm going to take the one on my left now and I want to go underneath all of this, the loop and the strand. And I want to go down this loop now to the left of my cord. And it'll look something like that. Next, I'm going to take my whoops, my top cord on my right side, and I can take this off now. I'm going to push it through this O-ring, and I'm going to pull this through. And be careful pulling it through because you might just pull too hard, and then your strands will be uneven. You have these two horizontal pieces. They're right directly in the middle. They're going to change color. So I don't want to say you have the two blue. But you have these two right here. And what you're going to do with your cord on the right is you're going to go over and around those two strands and around the bottom part of the O-ring. You're going to come up through the middle, but then you want to be on the right side of your working cord. So go over and around, and then around that bottom part of the O-ring, you can come up through the middle, but then put it on the right side of your working cord and pull it through. Next, you're going to go with the left one now, and you're going to put it through the O-ring, and be careful again pulling it. And you're going to do the same, just you're going to come out the left instead of the right. So you want to go find those two horizontal pieces on the left side. You're going to take your cord, you're going to go around those two horizontal pieces around the bottom part of the O-ring, come up through the middle, but be on the left side of your working cord and pull that and then you can tighten it up. Also when you're tightening it up, as you're tightening it up you can push those top cords through back through the o-ring again and they'll make it a little bit easier to smooth everything out. 
So once you have it tightened up, we can start that weave again. I did roll up my top course and like I said, I am using a blue rubber band for my top course to help me um, visualize which one I need. But if you don't have different colored cords, you can always roll this one up a different size than the others to help you. So to start again, we're going to take our small, smaller bundle of cord and what we want to do is we want to go underneath, right up the middle and then over. Next we're going to take the smaller bundle on the left side and we're going to go underneath the cord that we just worked, right up the middle and then over and you have your triangle. Next you're going to take your larger bundle of cord and what we're going to do is we're going to just go underneath and then wrap it around. So go underneath the right side and you're going to wrap it around you're going to go down that loop and go out towards your right. Next you'll take the same bundle on the left side and you'll go underneath and then down that loop and go out the left. Now you have your two horizontal middle pieces. You can pick up on them a little bit. You're going to take your top cord, which is my blue banded cord, and I'm going to go around and then out my right. So I'm going to go over and around and just out my right. Take the one on the left and you're going to go over and around but out the left. So over and around and out the left and then you can tighten it up. Once you have it tightened we can start again. So you're going to start on your right. You're going to go underneath right up the middle and over. Take the smaller bundle on the left, go underneath the cord that you just worked underneath, right up the middle, and then over. You have your triangle. Take the larger bundle on your right, go underneath your work, and then down that loop. Take the one on the left, go underneath, and then down that loop, go towards the left. You have your two horizontal pieces and they're starting to change color. You're going to pick up on them, take your cord on the right, go over and around and out the right. Take the one on the left, go over and around and out the left. And then you can tighten it up. And once you have that tightened up, you're just going to start again from the beginning on the right side and keep going. So this is what it's starting to look like and um, I haven't gotten to any purples yet but I really like how this is coming out. I have to say that Pericord EU is where I get my dip dyed cord and they have a very wide selection and it is very soft on the hands to use. I really really like it. So I'm going to continue this weave until the end and then I'll show you guys what it looks like. I'll show you guys how I do the tie off and what it looks like when it's complete. Alright guys, so I am at the end of my collar and I took it off the jig and we can we uh, weave in those top cords. So I'm sitting off on my right side and like I said, we're only going to be um, weaving in these two top ones. The other ones that are coming out of the sides, we will uh, cut and melt them where they are. You're just going to take your cord and go right in between the buckle and your work. So you're just going really right underneath that buckle. And you're going to do that with both top cords. So once you have those two top cords weaved through, we're going to flip it over and you have you have this loop that was it, like the first loop that we made um, feeding the cords through. You want to go with both of those cords that you just pushed through up that loop. Just 
just like that and you're just going to pull that up and bring your cord uh, down and you'll do that with the other one as well. Alright, once you finish that we can just cut and burn or cut and melt. I'm going to start on my sides. I do prefer that better. Make sure that everything is nice and tight. You're going to cut about a quarter of an inch up. I need to invest in scissors. Oh. You're going to fray this out. You're going to... I'm going to burn both of them at the same time because they're so close together. Actually... I'm going to burn them one at a time. I'll do the top one and then I'll do the bottom one. Try not to let it catch on fire. It does happen. It happens to me often. You're going to squish that down. You'll do the, the one that was at the bottom. I'm going to squish that one down. You'll do the same on the opposite side. So I want to apologize. I was completely out of frame with me cutting and melting this. So I'm just going to go over it with you real quick. So for the size, I went a quarter of the way up with cutting it. And I cut and melted one at a time on each side. And then with the ones in the middle, I did those also one at a time. I went a little bit above a quarter of an inch and uh, melted them as well. You want to lightly burn them because you don't want them to catch on fire. It does happen, but you really don't want that. So um, I lightly burned and I squashed them all down and I use a butter knife. Um, so sorry about me not being in frame for that. I do apologize. And so yeah, we're at the, basically the end. Now, um, you can use your collar as is if you would like, but um, I do like to put a little bit of Gorilla Glue on these melted areas just to give it a little bit of extra security. So I use clear non-foaming Gorilla Glue on all of my collars and leashes and I will put a little dab on all the spots and I will smear it around with my finger and let that dry. And then once it's dry, I can show you guys what the finished result looks like. You are going to want to, you know, take apart your pen here. Extra stuff here, because you don't need this extra stuff on here anymore. You can take this one off. And um, just a little bit of advice. If you are not having your dog wear the collar and you have it undone like this, maybe you hang it on something, make sure you take your pin and you you put it back into the U part. Well, I don't think it would stay on in here because it actually screws into this top. But if you do this, your U will not come out of your double cow's hitches because it can slip out. So, just be aware of that. Yeah. So, I'm going to put my Gorilla Glue on real quick, and then I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's all finished and dry.